Hello everyone, welcome to Mascara Fighters vlog and today I have a very special guest, Mark Taylor, the creator of He-Man and this is a big dream for me to be next to somebody you know of your caliber, be doing this quick uh, vlog, be able to have my Mascara Fighters anywhere near He-Man and what Masters of the Universe has meant to you know people of my generation, the next generation coming up. Thank you for being here. My pleasure, Felipe. Uh, well, why don't you give us a, a little background on, on some of the work that you did do on he -Man. Well, I did the... Uh, after I left Mattel, I went to Tommy Toys, then I went to uh, Playmates, and I did the Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Playmates. Uh, I love the Turtles. Then knocked around a little bit and went back to Mattel as a vice president. I ran Hot Wheels for about eight years. And... Uh, that's kind of pretty much my professional resume. I worked for the Naval Undersea Warfare before I went to Mattel. When you were uh, working on turtles, what were you doing specifically on the turtles? I started them. I uh, uh, were you I the one repackaging for? Because yeah. I know they used to be all red bandanas and they they were a comic book and they were very yeah. dark. And then the TV adaptation was different than the toy adaptation because the toy didn't look like the cartoon anyway. No. Uh, fortunately, Eastman and Laird, the guys that created that first book, it was kind of an underground comic. And uh, I met with them, and they're real nice guys. And they didn't have two cents. Yeah. And uh, so they they showed me their, their comic books. I was at Playmates, and I looked at them, and I said, uh, well, the thing is, it's a brotherhood story. It's a story of... Uh, four turtles and a, a wise man. And uh, together, they can do anything. But if you separate them, they're just kind of normal. And in fact, there's one episode where uh, Splinter says, I could turn you guys back into 15-year-old guys if you want normal guys. Yeah, with the retro moods and those. Yeah. And they said, that. no way. Yeah. We're staying the way we want to stay. And that's kind of the, what the turtles are all about. They're a little bit wise guys. They're a little bit a little bit uh, on the edge, but they're uh, they're fun guys. I enjoyed working with them. When uh, you were working on Turtles, did you have any say in what that toy were going to be in, made into, like the articulation so when you were talking to Playmates and things like that? Yeah, that was all my decision. So uh, like, about the arms moving yeah. like this and the hands moving like yeah. this? And the the cock piece that they had to hold the legs. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually that's because they're ball joints. Yeah, they're, yeah. Their joints are ball joints, so they have to have space down there. But the turtles were much easier to do, actually, uh, for that distortion that you have to do to get a toy so to move around than the uh, than, um, he man was. He -Man, he man was a rubber band. And he had to look good, yeah. And, you know, so he couldn't, he couldn't take the liberties with him that you could take with... Uh, with the turtles, yeah. and uh, so most of the He-Man, I only, I, I did the uh, first dozen figures or so. I did the Wind Raider, the Battle Ram, I did all of the, my wife did the labels for them, and uh, then I did the uh, Castle Grey Skull, which uh, I did, I sculpted it myself. And uh, then they put it, made a vacuum form of it and turned it into tooling. Yeah, Scott, Castle Grey Skull is, is very, very iconic. Everybody who's got a place that knows that. And, oh, it still holds up today. We're, we're here at PowerCon today and people are still selling the, the Grayskull because the molding, the detail on it was, was it still holds up. Look, it's, it's been like 30 Thank years. You. you know, so props to you. I mean, that, that was amazing. To, well, just to see that time has passed and the, the, the thing is still standing, really. The sculpting of uh, He-Man and Skeletor and Man at Arms and all the guys. That was done by, uh, I did the sketches, I did the drawings, but it was the sculptor was a man named Tony Guerrero, a very nice guy and one of the greatest sculptors I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. he, was, um, he was terrific and he was fast yeah. and he was excellent. He did a Lake, good turnaround and stuff like that. Right, right. Sculpting out of clay or was he plastic at that time? <laughs> Believe it or not, I did the preliminary sculpting for uh, for some of them out of Sculpey, and I would put them together with toothpicks. But uh, once he got them, he he did it wax. The whole thing was wax. 
that, that was, I mean, congratulations to, for all of your success. Uh, what, what's what some of the current projects you're working on nowadays? Oh, are you kidding? I'm retired. I, I'm enjoying my retirement. I enjoy doing nothing. I'm, I love computer, digital computer art and animating on a computer. I do that myself. And I just can make stuff happen. And it's just a gas. I, I just find it fascinating. I don't do it for anybody. I just do it for myself. Yeah, that, uh, have you ever thought about doing one more series? Anything, any idea you, you would think of to... Oh, lots of ideas. But uh, one last push, and then yeah, the big hurdle. I don't know if I've got it in me or not. I'm not sure. Yeah, because it does take a lot of. Yeah, you got to yeah. be willing, and I can't tell yeah. you. This is happening, type. Of I attitude. can't tell you how many all-nighters I pulled. Yeah. You know, where you're sitting there and the sun's coming up, and you, one last sketch, one last piece of sculpting. No, I, I, I know. I'm with mascara fighters. I'm I'm up at like four in the morning, painting the little figures, or yeah. or I'm up drawing it or scanning it or trying to clean it clean up the drawings because you know when you scan something that you drew there's always uh, paper particles yeah. and little things like that so that that could take like 30 minutes just oh on, yeah just on cleanup and you only did one image and, and all of a sudden it's six in the morning and you have to go to work or you have to do this or you have to do that or you have other commitments you know? isn't it funny when you're really into it like that like you're talking about you don't even feel time to buy you're sitting there and all of a sudden there's sunlight coming in what the hell happened? It was last time I looked. It was eight o'clock in the evening. Yeah, I think that's uh, more of the creatives because they say like nighttime is the best time for us. Yeah. So, so overnight is usually our work hours. We we just happen to be creative, you know. Usually like after eleven, like you start creating stuff, and then like you said, next thing you turn around, it's uh, you know seven eight o'clock in the morning. The sun's coming out, and you have to do other things. I think that's things. where the great stuff comes from. For me, it's always been the best stuff. Yeah. I appreciate you being here on my vlog, on helping me, giving me any advice. And do you have any advice for any of the creators out there that are coming up? Yeah. It sounds weird. Probably your dad said it to you, but don't give up. Just keep punching through. Just keep, it takes a certain amount of luck being in the right place at the right time and things yeah, gelling for you, you're right you know, about and <laughs> that just happens, and uh, it happened for me, and um, all I can say is, you get ready, and then maybe it happens, or maybe it doesn't, either way, what's the matter with being ready, that's a fun style of life anyway. Yeah, yeah you're totally right, thank you once again for being here, my pleasure, and more soon guys, see ya.